Thank you so much for joining us, Professor Annapurni. Can you please tell us a little bit about your work? Yeah, so I work on uh, astronomy and astrophysics and related areas, and uh, I uh, do research uh, using ground-based and space-based uh, uh, instruments like telescopes. And I have worked extensively with ground-based uh, uh, instruments starting from uh, my PhD days. I very used uh, the Kavalur Observatory extensively, and that gave me a lot of understanding regarding how to use uh, instruments and do research. That was a research on uh, uh, stellar physics and star clusters. Then I continued to study the stellar populations and nearby galaxies. And uh, when AstroSat was launched, I uh, worked on the UV imaging telescope, that is U UVIT. And I was a calibration scientist on UV imaging telescope and carried out the, the performance verification phase for the UV imaging telescope in 2015. It was launched in 2015. And I continued to carry out my research on uh, specific objects which are like, you know, emitting a large amount of copious amount of uh, radiation in the ultraviolet and trying to detect them and uh, see their formation scenarios and how they contribute to the entire story of uh, stellar physics and uh, uh, physics of galaxies and, you know, things like that. So that is the area of research I carry out. And I also proposed uh, the, the next generation UV optical imaging telescope based on the announcement of opportunity. Uh, that because we have already created a pool of uh, uh, resources, uh, including human resources for space instrumentation, so in order to carry on with the legacy, uh, so I've done that. But overall, uh, I do work on stellar physics, stellar populations, and nearby galaxies. Can you tell us what the future of the studies of stellar physics and cosmology is like in India, especially with ISRO's missions? Uh, yeah, so space-based space instruments have given us unique opportunity to study them in wavelengths which cannot be detected on the ground. So we used to carry out uh, uh, optical observations from the ground and to a certain extent near infrared, but if you want to go to ultraviolet or uh, 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 you know, longer wavelengths, then you need to go to space. Um, the ultraviolet because the ozone stops the radiation from coming in or X-rays as such. And longer wavelengths like uh, mid-infrared because the water vapor absorbs them. So both these, you have to place the instruments above the atmosphere to collect these uh, data from space. So uh, modern day astronomy uh, collects data across the wavelengths to study various uh, physical uh, uh, mechanisms which are going on in the uh, celestial sources. Because if you just look at one wavelength, that may be giving you a story of only one particular phenomena. There may be multiple things happening there. So simultaneously, you have to study them. AstroSat was actually looked at, I mean, aimed at looking at, you know, from visible to about 200 kV like hard X-ray together of one uh, object at the same time so that you can actually understand the complex physical mechanisms which are generating these uh, energy uh, photons across various wavelengths. So that was, a, uh, that was the aim and uh, uh, UV being one of the important things because of the transition between very high energy to a kind of uh, visible energy. So uh, with that capability, we can actually be quite, uh, uh, capacity increases because you can put in these missing links over there. But at the same time, ground-based uh, observatories also play a very important role because of follow-up studies, etc. And our capability and uh, the renewed interest in astronomy and astrophysics, like as you, as you all know, the Indian astronomy used to be quite strong in uh, uh, earlier days with mathematics and you know calculations etc with respect to eclipses but we now have the capacity to do build instruments and deploy them and collect the data and do the analysis and etc so we are in a much better position and uh, the younger generation is much more interested in doing space based uh, astronomy and uh, uh, basically space sciences is getting more and more interesting so with that awareness i think a lot of a uh, uh, lot of uh, requirement for i mean students wanting to do projects wanting to know more about it you know uh, and also amateur astronomers wanting to do uh, take the pictures of the sky because you have now good cameras and available. So astrophotography is very interesting. So there are a lot of things like people, you don't have to really do a mainstream astronomy as such. So it is a multiple ways of doing it and India is poised to do a lot of things in a variety of fields as such mainstream as well as, you know, uh, interesting things across, uh, um, I mean, various even students to amateurs to, you know, even really um, people, professionals, yeah. As the director of IIA, can you tell us a little bit about a couple of uh, other areas of study that the institute is working on and teams here? Yeah, so the institute, uh, I just give a history of the institute, actually um, it traces its origin to uh, an observatory set up in Madras in uh, 1780s. 
and the building came up in 1792. It's called the Madras Observatory in Nungambakam. So total solar eclipse played a key role in not only understanding the uh, nuances of the sun, but also trying to identify the very fundamental uh, things like the, our own el the elements in the universe. So one of the observations carried out in Meshilipatnam by people, the observers at uh, the Madras Observatory led to the identification of a line which was unknown then, then later on uh, identified as helium to do with helio, so first identified in uh, the sun. So this observatory in uh, uh, Madras moved to Kodai in 1899 and uh, operated as observatory Kodai Kanal. So this observatory became uh, in the Institute of Astrophysics in 1971. So we trace our like 200, more than 200 year old uh, tradition as being there and it also actually paid way for establishing various observatories in the country as well. So Kodai Kanal Observatory was the main observatory then, then uh, uh, Kavalur Observatory was formed and then we have observatories in um, Leh, uh, uh, three of them. Uh, we have field station in Leh and one in Han Leh and the other one being set up at the banks of the Pangong So. And uh, the Nainital Observatory also, the former director of IA, uh, Professor Vainibapu, was a director there. And that is the time when two one meter telescopes, one at uh, Nainital and one at uh, the VBO right now, were ordered and both of them completed 50 years of operation now. So there's a huge amount of uh, legacy here and also know how, not only in setting up the observatory, but also running it. And we have completed running of 125 years of the Kodai Canal Observatory. So this, to take it forward, we can actually do much more um, complex observatories and its operations. So the, uh, the observatory is Hanle, is actually set up in uh, 2000 and the telescope is op uh, operating for the last 24 years. But there are more investments coming and also already there, including the, 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 the MACE telescope, 21 meter MACE telescope from BRC and the uh, um, uh, Hagar array from TIFR BRC collaboration. And more telescopes are coming to more uh, maze they are proposing. And there is a, a space situational awareness telescope from ISRO being planned there and more such things are coming in. So we, as, as to protect the environment also to be uh, uh, work with the uh, uh, local community, we have declared the Hanley region, not we, but the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the administration of uh, the UT Ladakh has declared an area of uh, with radius of 25 kilometers as uh, the dark sky reserve. And that is not only to protect the sky and also to protect the, uh, um, uh, the wildlife over there and also to promote uh, astrotourism which will bring economy to a remote, the villages which are very remote out there. So this is one major program uh, uh, we, have, we have initiated and that will continue. And more observatory will come there. We are planning to have a better, bigger uh, optical telescope to be installed. And the Pangong So uh, Lake uh, area, we have uh, uh, one uh, point where it just extends into the lake and that is an ideal site to set up a solar telescope and that is also being uh, worked out uh, and the DST, the Department of Science and Technology is uh, moving towards approving that particular project and that will give us a very continued uh, uh, you know, niche on solar physics because as you can see the Kodai Kanal Observatory has given us a lot of data as uh, the from 1900 onwards we have data already available and made available to anyone to want to research on it. 100 years of data is already made public. Now if you want to continue that legacy you need to have a better telescope and better instrument and that's being planned out there and we hope to get it done in the next 5 years or, or maybe by the next 10 years definitely will be operational. Uh, so that's one major thing we are looking at. And also we are setting up a, a planetarium in Mysore that is a, a completely a, a dome filled with LED panels. So this will be the world's first LED dome, tilted dome planetarium in the world. And this is uh, going on and we expect to get it completed in a few months time from now. And once it is operational, it will be uh, uh, completely state of the art facility uh, and uh, it will have stunning images because the LED panels, we are addressing each and every LED for uh, the the information so it can produce high resolution and high dynamic range and color gamut. So it will be a, a wonderful experience. So this is another project which uh, uh, we are um, uh, we are going going on and so uh, exciting times uh, and looking looking forward to completion of this exciting projects and seeing the fruit, I mean science coming out of it as well. Indeed, it seems very promising and exciting uh, in India for astronomy over the next few years. Uh, now, congratulations, you are the recipient of the Vigyan Shri Award. How does it feel and uh, what do you feel about the significance of the government recognizing scientific work like this in the country? Yeah, I'm very happy that I'm one of the recipients and I'm, I'm also happy that, really, I mean, I'm the only one 
uh, woman being given the Vigyan Sri, but at least one representation is there. I mean, I look forward to having more uh, women ge uh, getting this award in future. Uh, but I'm happy that I'm re recognized under the space sciences and technology category. And uh, um, I, I'm not sure the, uh, uh, in the sense that, you know, this is the first time the award is being given. So the details are yet to be, I, I'm still get to get, uh, waiting to get the details. But um, I think it's a, um, the government has done a good thing by having a streamlined uh, awarding thing in the lines of uh, other uh, areas like sports. We have uh, Khel Ratna, et cetera, and um, et cetera. So this is also coming under one. But of course, in order to promote science and also in order to inspire people who do science, uh, any award, I mean, any number of awards is not enough because uh, science is something which people do not for awards, but for uh, our own satisfaction. It's not for awards, not for money. So science is something which is uh, somebody is passionate about doing it. And of course, if the recognition comes, happy about it, but that is not going to stop or uh, uh, whatever people are pursuing. So, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much.